All right to identify that the dollar funding is the be all and end all for markets this week. I mean, that's the thing I think that the central banks are most focused on. Um, and I think the swap lines for, you know, extending the swap lines beyond the five central banks that they initially had in place is, a, is an excellent move. But I think that, you know, the, there still remains that demand for dollar liquidity. It's still uh, visible in the basis swaps. Um, and definitely, um, you know, I, I think we're, I, I feel we're in sort of that, that first big battle of the movie. All the cavalry has come in. Uh, the two sides have engaged, and we're not really sure which way the battle is going to go. I think the central banks have done an excellent job this week. They've really bought their uh, – uh, they've bought everything. We've seen, you know, unusual central banks. There's been an announcement from the Fed every day. The Bank of England's gone. The RBA is gone. Um, you know, uh, but it's still unclear in funding markets if, if their actions are going to be sufficient. Well, let me ask you, um, we're seeing a bounce in all sorts of asset classes uh, this morning, in part led by the additional announcements of stimulus that we've seen from the ECB, the cut in rates from the Bank of England, and uh, uh, the additional money made available to purchase both uh, sovereign and corporate debt at this point. Is this bounce for real? What's your opinion? Have we found a bottom for many of these asset classes now, or do you think this is a temporary ledge? Uh, I think I'd probably go with the latter view. I mean, I, I, the central banks are doing a good job. The fiscal authorities are doing a good job. But unfortunately, the virus just keeps coming. I mean, that, that, is, the, that is the problem. If you look at the – if you look, think back to the beginning of the week, we had that shocking China data. Um, and then the subsequent to that, almost everyone and their dog has – taken a massive lump out of the China GDP forecasts and then the virus, you know, the virus, the epicenter of the virus this week has really spread into Europe. It's a simple read across from shut China down, GDP goes down massively, shut Europe down, European GDP goes down massively. And I think that's the sort of thing just towards the back end of this week, we're starting to see very, very negative uh, Q1 slash Q2 GDP forecasts come out, you know, minus down four, minus down six uh, for the quarter. Now, these are huge chunks of GDP, so no wonder the, uh, the firefighters are on deck. You know, these are very, they're a very substantial slowdown, and um, you know, there's still a significant... I think this week we've really had a lot more clarity on the depth of the slowdown, but there's still a lot of uh, uncertainty with regards to the duration of the slowdown. And if it's a long one, then markets will go down longer, further. Colin, I appreciate everything you've said, and it's really good to uh, see you on Scorebox today as well. Look, look, this is a dual-fold crisis, as you've very graphically shown. It's the pandemic crisis and an economic crisis. If, and, and this is a very optimistic point of view, that the point of crisis for the UK can be passed or reached within the next 12 weeks, and those are the words pretty much that the Prime Minister is, is, is hoping to see, uh, then it becomes more about the economic crisis rather than this dual crisis as well. Does your rush for US dollar and lack of willingness to buy anything else, does that change when this becomes more of an economic crisis and less of a pandemic crisis, if indeed, as is hoped, that is the evolution? Yeah, I think that in the short term, you know, the funding pressures need to go. And once the funding pressures go, I think then, then the huge demand for dollars go. Um, and then I think uh, then we can start looking, looking for a bottom. But I, I think the, the problem is uh, if, if the, you know, with the, with the slowdown in economic activity, it's not just the liquidity function that's going to sl slide more into the credit side of the economy. What, what are the measures the government's going to come up with? There are some sectors of the economy which are going to be, you know, I don't know, wiped out is probably, probably an exaggeration, but require very significant government support. In what form of that is that support going to come? Um, will there be nationalizations of certain industry or will the government just offer credit support? Uh, and these are the sort of like the nitty gritty and the details that will make a difference.